John King USA, CNN, weeknights 7 Eastern. With new developments in the WikiLeaks national security scandal, there is an international warrant now for the arrest of the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, on allegations of sexual misconduct. And the site released more classified State Department documents today, causing more friction with Russia and other U.S. allies and global partners. Even as it tries to control the diplomatic fallout, the White House released a six-page document today detailing government-wide efforts to prevent future breaches. Among those actions, the State Department is now blocking access to its secrets from the Pentagon-run network an Army private is suspected of using to download more than a million pages of classified defense and State Department documents. So are those new steps enough? And could this have been prevented in the first place? With us tonight, the top Pentagon spokesman, Jeff Morrell, as is the top State Department spokesman, P.J. Crowley. Gentlemen, welcome. I want to start with a simple fact. There is a lot of friction between your department, the State Department, and your department, the Pentagon, with people at the State Department in private conversations essentially saying, this is your fault. Well, if I may, PJ, let me correct, first of all, your opening statement. This department, my department, the Defense Department, has not been cut off from accessing State Department cables. We are now accessing them through a different and, frankly, more restrictive uh, higher classification network, but we still have access to them. Uh, so I don't know that there is the finger pointing that, that you allege going on. Oh, there is. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to take your word for it. But John, look, you know, 20 years ago, Caspar Weinberger and George Schultz did not get along. Today, Secretary Clinton and Secretary Gates interact comfortably, uh, they finish each other's sentences, and, and that flows down. So, you know, the State Department is a different entity and a different organism than the, than the Pentagon, but the fact is, on these global challenges, there's a whole-of-government effort, and we're working side-by-side side with the State Department and, the, and, the, and the, uh, the Pentagon every day. And a whole-of-government effort, I would point out, John, to get to the bottom of how we share information more securely. Right. It's not just State and DOD work in this. As you saw and mentioned from the White House announcement today, this is an interagency, whole-of-government effort. Uh, so we are bringing all the resources of the federal government to bear on this. Whole of government effort. The defense secretary, your boss, Mr. Gates, yesterday, Secretary Gates said he thinks there are about 60 percent of the problem solved so far. You have taken steps at the State Department that you think at least minimize the risk of this happening again. But I want you to listen to Pete Hoekstra, Republican congressman from Michigan, the top Republican on the Intelligence Committee, and he frankly doesn't seem to believe you. I still don't sense uh, an urgency to fix the problem. I think that there are still other government databases that, there are, that are out there uh, that have similar types of materials uh, that may be vulnerable to penetration or vulnerable to being downloaded <clears throat> by employees or by other individuals or organizations in a way that would da damage American interest. Yeah. Now, Pete Hoekstra has access to the intelligence, and if you listen to what he's saying there, he's saying it could be happening again right now. Let me pick up there. For, you know, first of all, let's, let's understand what happened here. You know, someone inside the United States government violated the trust and confidence placed in him. Uh, he downloaded material and passed it to people not authorized to have it. That is a crime. We're investigating that crime, and we're going to prosecute, you know, those responsible. But also understand that, that remember, 9-11, you know, the issue of connecting the dots, and in the aftermath, there was properly an effort to share information because, you know, in a country like Afghanistan, you've got soldiers working side by side with civilians. They need to be on the same page. That said, in light of what's happened here uh, across the government, we are stepping back and saying, okay, we've shared information, but what can we learn from this? And we have taken aggressive steps, and we'll take more steps as we work through how to achieve that balance, how to share information but protect it at the same time. I think a question a lot of people ask, especially people who work in any environment where they use computers in a sensitive situation, is that when you were taking those necessary steps post 9-11, Put more information out there so that more people could at least try to connect the dots and get a little heads up on what might be coming. Was there, why did somebody forget, essentially, to put an alarm in place that if somebody was using a thumb drive or some other portable media device to download such a high volume of documents, there wouldn't somehow be an alarm that went off and said, we have a problem? John, this is not a static security situation. We are constantly evolving and developing new mechanisms by which to safeguard our networks. Now, I understand Representative Hoekstra's concerns, but for him to say that we there is not a sense of urgency within my department, within his de department, within the United States government is just simply not accurate. 
the very highest levels of all these departments are focused on this. And it's not as if we've been focused on it today. I, with all due respect to my friend Wolf Blitzer, who seems to suggest that all of a sudden today we're focused on this. Nonsense. Since we were first uh, done wrong by these guys back in July, we have been taking efforts to very much beef up and fortify our networks. You know, no longer, as you mentioned, can, can you write onto uh, uh, removable media. Mm -hmm. You can no longer move classified information onto an unclassified uh, network unless you are in a, in a situation where it is monitored and where there are two people on hand to do it. Uh, so there have been a number of safeguards, and now we've got this new credit card kind of monitoring right. system where if the very situation you're talking about, if someone does download unusual amounts of information or unusual information for where they are, alarms will indeed go off. But this has been an evolving process. Does WikiLeaks have more? We know they have more than a half million Defense Department documents that were supposed to be classified. We now know they have 250,000, somewhere in that ballpark figure, State Department documents that were supposed to be classified. In the once the fire alarm were sounded, when you went around looking at the risk here, do you know that they have more? Well, we know that they haven't released all that. Beyond we... that, beyond the State Department and the Pentagon documents. We, we've done, we've done for forensics across right. the Defense Department, the State Department. They do right. have more documents. We're not entirely sure what they are. But back to your sense of urgency here. Secretary Clinton is in Kazakhstan today, face to face with many of the leaders who have been subject to uh, some of these uh, documents. She has to look these leaders in the eye and say, we will make sure that this does not happen again. So I assure you, because we're, we are dealing with the consequences of this, and it's going to take some time to work through, and there's absolutely damage to national security in the process. Uh -huh. We recognize this sense of urgency. And do the two secretaries, Gates and Clinton, respectively, do they see this the same? You mentioned she's seeing eye to eye. She has the tough job right out there, face to face, doing damage control right now. 186 countries, is my understanding, the department has been in touch with. Several dozen conversations involving Secretary Clinton herself. Talk to people at the State Department, yourself included, they say significant damage to national security. Secretary Gates yesterday was not minimizing the damage, but he was taking a view of, you know what, we're the United States, we're an indispensable power, this will cause some bumps and bruises, but we will get through this. Do they see the, the scope of this differently? I think so. I mean, I think what, what Secretary Gates was saying is that there are many people who have been hyperventilating in the press and suggesting this is the... You know, the, the of, melt, this is the death policy. of American power right. and prestige. Right. And he was pushing back on that notion right. that there is long term irreparable damage done to American power and prestige right. as a result of this. He doesn't buy into that, but he in no way wants to minimize the very real uh, damage and, and, and difficulty that the State Department has been, been put in in dealing with individual relationships, regional relationships, individuals who want to cooperate with us, and so forth. That's a very real consequence of this, and he's not trying right. to minimize that. Julian Assange calls himself a journalist and a whistleblower whose only interest is in transparency. It's nonsense. He's an anarchist. He's trying to uh, undermine the collaboration, the cooperation, the system by which we engage with other governments, cooperate with other governments, and solve your regional challenges. And the contrast could not have been more startling. Here you have Julian Assange in an undisclosed location on Skype saying that uh, the, this and that. And then you've got Secretary uh, Clinton, Secretary Gates, fully engaged in the world trying to solve the world's challenges. Um, Julian Assange uh, you know, is a, an anarchist, and, and we're not going to let him succeed. And that, frankly, in my personal opinion, may be giving him even more credit than he deserves, because I think, I think what he likes most of all are the lights and cameras that are in a studio like this. A grudge against the United States, or just a grudge against what? Well, t t take a, one contrast. You know, we have uh, reached out to governments. We have reached out to individuals who are sources uh, for us right. and provide us perspective. We're going to help them. We are, we are talking to the media and making sure that they understand if, if, if this name gets out, uh, this person's life can be at risk. Julian Assange had no regard for life when he's put out these documents. And, and we're going to protect our sources. We're going to protect our interests. We're going to engage the countries of the world. We're going to resolve this. Uh, we're, going to, take we're, some time. we're going to talk in a minute with some law enforcement pros, legal pros, about the international manhunt for him. But is there anything the State Department can do? You can track Americans, obviously, when they move with their passports around the world. But you have embassies and consulates and other assets around the world. Is there anything the State Department can do or anything the Defense Department can do with its significant resources to help Interpol and others find out where he is? 
we, we're a nation of laws, first and foremost, so there needs to be a legal rationale for doing so. There is an investigation underway, as PJ mentioned, led by the Department of Justice. I think you saw from Attorney General Holder that this is receiving the very highest level of attention within the Department of Justice. I think we're both confident in our respective organizations that they are going to hold the people who are responsible for this accountable, including, if necessary, Julian Assange, which seems to run an organization that solicits, uh -huh. induces, may even seduce people uh, to leak uh, classified information. And it's not just our interests that are at stake here, the interests of other countries, so our laws will apply them as we should, and other, uh -huh. I'm sure other countries will do the same. P.J. Crowley, Jeff Morell, appreciate your coming. We should make this a regular.